thing for this occasion. Good and faithful servant. Well done. Amen. Motto stepping as God orders. Amen. Now scripture coming from Matthew, the 25th chapter, 21st verse. Amen. And amen. If you don't mind, what I would do, I would like to go down to the 14th. 14th verse. Amen. And come up to the 21st verse. Is that all right? Amen. Matthew, the 25th chapter, 14th verse. Now, focal scripture, amen, is Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 21st verse. Amen. If you have it, say amen. And it reads, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged it in the earth, and his is the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants come and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more, five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you to read about this word. In reading, amen, the 25th chapter of Matthew, amen, we see that the Lord is doing a lot of teaching in that particular chapter. And in each one of the different uh, scenarios or stories or parables that he gave, amen, he began them with for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And we have to understand that uh, who the Lord was talking about. And, 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 and really, in this discourse, we have to really have an understanding of kingdom principles. Amen. Uh, the prophets of God throughout the ages have, have foretold of a glorious era when the kingdom of God and there is a distinction between kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. Amen. Uh, the kingdom of God is, this, is defined and described in Romans, the 14th chapter, the 17th verse. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what it is, is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, and, and sometimes people get things kind of, they kind of misconstrue some things because the, the disciples and the Jewish nation, when Jesus came on the scene, they was expecting the kingdom of heaven to come at any time. Amen. They were looking for that king of kings and, and lord of lords to finally bring them out of the oppression of the Romans. Amen. But when Jesus came, he came to establish the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God dwells on in you. It's on the inside. It is a spiritual thing. Because God is a spirit. Amen. But the kingdom of heaven is an aspect of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God encompasses all, but the kingdom of heaven is talking specifically to the Jewish nation. Amen. Amen. Uh, and when he, when he, when these prophets of old, when they talked about the kingdom, they, they wanted to see that visible glory and righteousness of God upon the earth. Amen. And 
we shall see that. That will come to pass. The kingdom of heaven shall come to pass. Amen. As the kingdom of God evolves and brings this thing to a close. Amen. Because when we see in Revelation, the 11th chapter, the 15th verse, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great forces in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. He's talking about the millennial reign of Christ. Amen. The thousand years that Jesus is actually going to sit on a throne in this earth and rule and super rule. Amen. A lot of times we don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I mean well, we as the church of God, amen, our, our vision is when the Lord put us into that spiritual body, amen, and everything becomes spiritual and we won't have to war no more. We won't have to worry about pain and aches and all that, amen, and that's coming. But the kingdom of heaven still must come to pass. Amen. amen. He's going to establish a physical kingdom. Amen. According to the word of God. This is the kingdom of heaven. The unity, the peace, and prosperity of an ideal world government system that has been so coveted by every passing generation will be at last realized in the kingdom of the Prince of Peace. If you notice in Michael, the fourth chapter, the first through the fourth verse, he said, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it, and many nations shall come and say, come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, and recruit strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his free fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts have spoken it. Amen. See, that's the reason why I can understand why Christ told his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And when we say that thing, it's a twofold message. Because when we say, Thy kingdom come, we're talking about the kingdom of God coming into the hearts of men. We're waiting for that kingdom to save souls, just like he saved us. He said, I came to seek and to save. They that are lost. I praise God for being a part of the kingdom. Aren't you glad you're a part of the kingdom? Aren't you glad you got a citizenship in the kingdom? Amen. Amen. Well, the, the role of the church doing this kingdom of heaven, eh? because when the Lord began to give this parable about the ones with the talent, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like it unto. Amen. He was talking to a Jewish congregation right there. Amen. He was teaching the Jews right there. Amen. Now there are some principles that apply across the board. When he talked to not only Jews, but he talked to everybody. And we can see, amen, how this principle transcends even to us. Amen. Because when the Lord has given us a charge, when he has given us a duty, when he has given us a responsibility, he expects us to do it with everything we got. If you want him to say, well done, amen. You don't tell somebody, well done, when they had to do something.
the Lord is looking for faithful men, yeah. faithful women yeah. that's going to honor him, that's going to bow down to the king. I praise God because one day I realized I couldn't do this on my own. I didn't have no good thing in me. How can I be a good servant when I didn't have good in me and you didn't have good
to establish. Yeah.